Hello, I'm the CNC repairman. Rigging machines is stressful and transporting them. Right now, I'm hauling a VF home that I just bought. I'll tell you how much I paid for it later in the video, but I wanna show you how easy it is to run one of these machines home. I'm the CNC repairman. I'm going to show you how the Niagara Falls pull The shop is getting a new machine, and so their rigging company is paying to put it on my trailer. This happens quite often, so you can snag yourself a good deal and roll it home with your truck and your trailer. I brought with me some Cosmoline. Any type of rust inhibitor will work. I'm going to spray this down on the table, on the way covers, on the linear rails, inside the spindle and on the Z linear rails. There's lots of different variations of this. This is 400. 400 is a harder substance. It's harder to get off. Usually you have to use WD-40 or some type of solvent. Uh, they make a 300 and I think a 250 or 200, which I like those better, but this is what we had in our garage. So this is what I grabbed. This machine's future is gonna be really bright. You wanna get it inside of the T-slots. You wanna get this thing home. You know, we're gonna pull this thing outside and since it's warm, it's gonna immediately start to kinda of just condense or moisture is gonna start coming out. So spray it everywhere so we get it home. And don't breathe this stuff, it's kinda of bad. A little story, we will not, our company policy, ship or prep a machine without doing this. And that became about because we were packing up a machine for a used dealer and the used dealer said, ah, the machine's just going down the road. We've sold it, don't spray it with Cosmoline. The customer doesn't want to have to clean it up. And we said, hey, we don't think that's a good idea. Nope, 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 do what I said. Okay, so we didn't spray it. It rained on the way there, then the customer didn't want it because of other reasons, then it sat out in the yard. Anyhow, the whole thing was rusted. So our new policy, if we're gonna pack up a machine for you, we're gonna spray it. Kind of a, just, a, you know, one of those things where it's like, hey, if these guys did it, they did it right. Um, a machine got sold at auction around here and the shop who bought it called us and said, hey, the, sh the place that auctioned off already sold it. We want you to just go and spray it down. And so I went out there, they were like loading it on somebody else's truck and I, wire tied the doors, wrapped the control, sprayed the whole thing down, made sure all the externals were in the machine. I didn't really prep it for shipping, I just kind of sprayed it down and made sure when it got there it wasn't gonna be damaged. So, let's do some more spraying. It's a nice table. I've seen them with the shell mill ran into it or it's got a bunch of dings on it, but this table is actually in pretty good shape. But the table doesn't matter that much because most people put subplates on it or put vices on it. The table is just kind of an indicator of has not so bright people been running this machine and banging it up and smashing stuff into it or was it taken care of? But I don't think a bad table affects at all the geometry of the machine or anything else. There's a spot that most people forget to spray and that's the linear rails for Z. You'll want to clean them when you get home, but it's because the water always gets on up in here. So just a quick spray down here will keep these from getting rusted on the way home. Here's the thing. You might be moving your machine home in the summertime and you're like, oh, I don't need to spray this. Every time I've heard that it rains on the person or they drive through a puddle because the sprinkler is in the summertime. Put some Cosmoline on your machine. You'll be happy. What if it sits for a while? You don't want to get the table and it be full of rust. So just go pick up some simple rust remover. This is really convenient to wrap the control in cardboard and saran wrap, and then if you need to tie your tarp down, wrap it. There's this like caveat. Do you tarp your machine or do you not tarp it? Because if you tarp it poorly, the tarp's gonna flap, and then you rub the paint off on your machine. But if you don't tarp it, you get bugs and tar and rocks and stuff in your machine. So if you do tarp it, tarp it very, very well especially if it's gonna be raining outside or it's gonna be nasty and it's gonna be outside for a while. So think about, do I wanna tarp it? Do I have a tarp that's big enough? The tarp has to be huge. And then how am I gonna tie it down? Am I gonna wrap it in saran wrap? Am I gonna ratchet strap it? Am I gonna have enough room to tie the doors shut, put the externals inside and have the coolant tank on my trailer? So all of those things to keep in mind so you don't get stuck 
wishing you had brought something else. Saran wrap, Cosmoline, chains, cardboard boxes, um, flags if it's gonna be sticking outside your trailer. Simple towing stuff. The machine is considerably smaller without the chip auger chute. This one's been cut. Way easier to remove when it's like this. And this one isn't worn through yet. A lot of them are worn through here. That'll make it smaller on the trailer. This is what I usually do. And it'll usually show up sometimes. One time we put the chip auger in a cardboard box like this in a horizontal. And then we ran the head down on a block of wood and we didn't strap the head. Well, the trucker slammed on the brakes. The X-axis went flying over, crushed a way cover, crushed the chip auger. It was our fault, so we had to buy a new way cover, a new chip auger, fix a bunch of stuff. Thankfully, the spindle was fine, but this is both a good idea and a bad idea. Good idea that you don't lose it, bad idea that stuff rolls around, you could damage something. So I'm gonna put it in there until we get it on the trailer, and then I'll put it in my truck. You need to bolt the head down to the table via a bolt here in a bracket or some type of way because you don't want the table sloshing back and forth and the spindle falling and then damaging the ball screws or the table or bending something up. I've got some secret plans for this machine. You'll find out later in a while what they are and maybe what I paid for it. But this is not right, so do a better job if you're gonna rig the machine home, but this will work. We're not going super far, but I hope we don't get home and this is all over the place. We've got a tandem axle trailer here kind of on the edge, it's heavy, but I've done it before and I wanna show you all the steps, the things to remember so you don't end up waiting to get a machine because you forgot a tie down or a board to put it on or some Cosmoline or a tarp or saran wrap. Lots of things to remember when rigging a machine home and the stress level is high. It's like, I gotta make a living on this thing and so I don't wanna damage it, I don't wanna hit a overpass, I don't want the thing to fall off, I don't wanna get a ticket for being overweight, I mean, woo! Lots of things going on when you're trying to take a machine, your first machine home, which you're probably stoked and freaked out about. So I'll show you how to do it. My first time, I was pretty scared. This is like my third time doing it. It's still a white knuckle drive, but don't go up any big passes. Ideally, don't do it when it's raining. We're in the winter time here in February, so praying for no rain, but let's get things ready on the trailer here. Let's get the machine prepped, waiting for the riggers, lots of waiting around, so let's go. So exciting watching me take the ratchet straps off. Woo! We're waiting for the riggers and the truckers and waiting. The forks on the forklift are pretty thick when they're a heavy forklift. So you need some big timbers to set the machine on so they don't nasty up your trailer bed. And there's enough room for the fork to get under the machine and the forklift to pick it up at home. Don't forget you need room for the coolant tank and some tie downs for it, as well as strapping and chain blocks for the base casting. I like to use an easy way to tie the machine casting down to the trailer. This is how the machine is shipped from the factory. They tie one of these on the leveling screw with a nut on top, and you put a chain in it. If you don't have one of these, you've gotta to try to get underneath the casting in a webbing. These are really easy. If you don't have a set of these, hopefully the new machine that you're getting has a set I found these in a machine shop. These I had lasered, we sell these if you need them. But you don't need these, just you wanna plan for how am I gonna strap this thing down so it doesn't roll off. We're gonna use some like car tie downs to tie the thing down. Let's see if we can dig them out. I don't claim to be a rigger or a trucker. My first machine that I hauled was a TL1 and it was a lot heavier than I thought. I did it with this truck and trailer. TL1 looks small, but they're solid. And then I did a VF2 from Kalispell to Spokane. It's normally a four hour drive. I think it took me 10. This truck just does not have the power that it used to. And the, the VF2 was heavy, but can be done. I did it, it was just really slow. And you know, don't put it super far back on the axles, but just like hauling a tractor home, except this is a big machine. If you don't run this floor brace, which is mostly just for vibration on this sheet metal. This was kind of added to give some rigidity to the front and when you're running a hard cut. Run it up, run this floor kind of sheet metal brace up because if you don't, the rigger will pick the back of the machine up, tip it forward 
and then this will get bent or when they go to set it down and they've run the leveling screws up, the riggers usually will do that to clear the forks. They set it down, this is too long, and it hits and bends. I've seen this floor kind of cover. I've seen this bent a whole bunch. I don't know what to say, I don't even know what it's called. Foot pad, I've seen this foot pad bent. So run it up. I know this machine was having RS-232 issues. That might be why. Definitely, this is approved for a high baud rate. Not a chance. The trucker finally got here, the riggers finally got here. They unloaded the first machine, the new one. So now it's time to load up our machine. Just remember, if you're gonna load a machine and you're waiting on a trucker and a rigger, they all are slow and they take their time. So don't be in a hurry. Plan half of a day, a whole day, a morning, just for everything to get. Lots of people, lots of heavy things getting moved around. An update after waiting four hours. We finally got the machine out. Now they're gonna put on our trailer and we didn't bring a lunch. We thought we'd be home by nine. No, it's gonna be like 1.30. But there is the little machine. It looks quite small on a forklift. Quite big in a little garage or someone's garage. Shop garage. Let's get it on our trailer and get home. Kinda get it back towards those axles, but you know, not over them, but as close as we can to it. But it doesn't need to be in between the axles. I think I can get in. I can get stuff moved if you need. Okay. You should be able to get whatever's I, closest to this. This is the third one I've had on this trailer, so. Okay. Yeah, let's go a little more. That's centered better. That looks pretty good there. It should be, I was hoping the two by fours would be enough for your forks. Yeah, I'm hoping it should be. I've got these bigger four by fours, so. Perfect. There you go. Thanks, guys. The great news is it's not raining. I haven't tarped it yet, but we've got it all sprayed down, so no worry if it does get a little bit wet. Want to put more air in your tires? I'd love to. Probably should have put it on the other way around so you have more weight towards the... I was thinking of that. The other one I hauled this way too and I'm not going very far. Okay. Just tying it down here. That should do it. Good thing we didn't get any closer or I would have been running out of chain. I forgot. I forgot. Now I remember. Last time I did this, I had to use these and I didn't bring enough. That's why they're in here. The, this plate was too thick for my hooks. But if you use a chain hook, then you're able to do it. Yeah, the other ones that I had, I too cheap and didn't want to take them out of inventory. Kind of came back and bit me. That'll do. Go 
go two more. Go one more. Mm. That will work. I just need to get the cheater bar. I'll grab it. Thank you. Hope I don't knock the camera over. I'm in the bowels. I hope you can't see my plumber's butt, but I couldn't get the sheet metal cover off the front. You could probably come, come, come over here. Right here. Yeah, hey. <laughs> I couldn't get the cover off the front, mostly because I didn't want to get a grinder out. And man, there's a bunch of gunk everywhere. But I'm just putting the last tie down sh strap on here and then I'm gonna chain it on the front. I wanna do, I wanna do a good job chaining it because if I get pulled over or somebody complains about the way I've loaded it, I want it to be safe. I don't claim to be a trucker or a rigger or really even know kind of what I'm doing. I've done this a few times, hauled some machines. It was safe, I made it home. <sighs> Trying to do it all right, but I also, weather dependent and everything else. Okay, I'm climbing out. Oh, oh. One more tie down. I think, I think I can do it. Yeah, I can go forward. Good. Okay. Really straight cut there. I got the machine on the trailer, and the whole reason I made this video is I wanna show you how semi-easy possible it is for you to get one of these. You can get it at a good deal. I was gonna tell you earlier, how much did I pay for this machine? It's not the cheapest machine I bought. I actually bought a VF2 for $1,000 once. I had to haul it a long way home. This one, I paid 5,500 for. Now, I think that's a pretty good deal for what our plan is with it. So if you were to get this machine, and I've seen them go for cheaper, I've seen them go for a little more, I think that's a fair price, especially for the fact that you could put this in your garage and you could make parts with it and you could grow your business and probably get a second one. That's my whole point. I may have not done everything right. If you try to do this, check your state laws about weights and about oversize. This fits on a trailer, it's not over height, it's not over width. If you have three, you'd have to stick the other way carrying an SL, an ST, a VF2, those smaller size machines. You can haul them yourself. You need a good size truck and trailer and be safe. I'm gonna do our best to be safe. So I hope you had fun. We just kind of showed you the reality of picking up a machine for a good deal. I got it for a good deal because this shop needed room for a new machine. Great opportunity. There is opportunity out there and I wanna help you whatever that may be, whether it's to get a machine, find one, repair it, live the dream kind of in the machine tool world. So. I'm the CNC Repairman, keep watching. We'll show you more of what we're trying to do to help people. Quick story I wanted to tell you. If you've watched me for a little while, you know I grew up in this machine tool industry. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, my father's been a service tech since he got out of high school, right out of high school. And this machine here, my father installed when I was just a little tiny kid. He actually helped this shop get their first two machines. So it's kind of sad. The owner of the shop just came out and said, take good care of it. I remember when you, Aaron, were this tall and here working with your dad, which actually coincides. This is a 97. I would have been like three years old. Like I said, my dad just took me everywhere with him and I'm his only son and so we spent a lot of time together working on machines. But wow, this is our old logo of our machine tool company. We got a new logo and kind of now focusing on the CNC repairman side of the business. But what a cool story that this machine's been in this shop for the last 24 years, 27 years, a long time. And now it's just continuing. So that, that wasn't why we got the deal or anything. There's lots of good deals to be made out there. There's lots of cool old machines, but what a cool thing to have been around this a long time ago and now we're gonna use this to test circuit boards and to do lots of fun stuff and lots of videos. That's why we got this machine and we're happy to haul it home and wish us luck. There's a pretty sunrise, man.
Well, no, I mean, er, it was a pretty sunrise earlier. Now it's ugly. <laughs> 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 